welcome to the Shipper Update. I'm Anthony Smith, Chief Economist here at Freight Waves, and it's Monday, so that means we have a week in review, or the outlook for the week and the upcoming releases, I should say. And so let's jump into it with our first chart behind me here. We have orders for durable goods. It's not gonna be a jammed pack week like we had last week, where it's just like Christmas. That just kind of happens when the stars align once a month with all these economic updates and releases and things like that. This week, not as many releases, but still a lot of great information out there. The durable goods orders or the orders report is gonna be up, or the orders index is gonna be updated, showing what kind of order activity that we've been seeing over the last month up till February. So we're gonna get this update, and this is gonna be one of those areas where it's pertinent to see what's flowing in in terms of orders, because those orders, of course, get produced and then those produced goods get shipped throughout the country and while those orders are placed there's also that freight aspect as well as some of those commodities and raw materials to make those goods get shipped throughout the country so they can then get produced as well so this whole thing as you know is a supply chain so looking at the orders we're going to be watching for further upward movement because that would be indicative of more production activity as we continue to move forward throughout the and go into I should say the upcoming quarter and wrap up this third quarter or this first quarter here going into our next chart here one of the subcategories for the orders for durable goods is going to be non-defense copper goods new orders excluding aircraft and so it's going to be a while it's been a while since we spoke about this one and this is going to be one of those indexes that I watch closely for business to business activity especially upstream now non-defense capital goods new orders excluding aircraft might seem like a mouthful because it is and you can even get fancy look at the year over year trend if you want to start looking at the rate of growth and things like that but Essentially, it's nine defense capital goods. Let's break it down, nine defense. So take out that defense uh, orders in there because defense can be a little bit uh, volatile and very high one month, very low another month, and that can take away from the overall trend. As you can see here, we have this orange line, which is the flatbed outbound tender rejection index, something I watch very closely on a regular basis. Um, when we're looking at this nine defense capital goods new orders, the other part of it, capital goods. So these are capital good expenditures that are being ordered that really gives it that business to business aspect. Also excluding aircraft because those are other uh, orders that could be very large in um, the amount, but also could be very volatile as well, taken away from the underlying trend. So when we exclude these two aspects of the defense spending and the uh, expending on aircraft or the orders for aircraft, I should say, um, those are gonna be the two big segments are gonna be volatile to take away from the trend. And when you look at those and take them out, Look at what we have here for those capital goods orders. That's really gonna be a great sign for business to business activity and what kind of momentum is really flowing upstream. Now, the other big thing to kind of take into account when you're looking at these orders upstream is where is it all going? Because if we've heard stories and stories and stories around how warehouse capacity is tightening and tightening and tightening and it still holds true. So as you see these orders continue to climb up, the other big thing that we have to look at in our next chart here is gonna come from uh, an index that we watch closely from some great friends of ours. Uh, Zach Strickland, and I know him well, is Dr. Zach Rogers, who is from uh, Colorado State University, who really helps put together this amazing index, and that is the LMI index, the Logistics Managers Index, so the LMI. No two, need for two indexes there. Anyway, looking at the LMI, we're seeing that inventories are up to an 80.18. This is inventory levels here. This is one of those subcomponents to the LMI. And as you can see, inventory levels are continuing to climb. When you dive into the report, Dr. Zach Rogers really mentions that inventories upstream are really being more impacted than downstream. So upstream inventories, looking at wholesalers, things like that, they're really getting loaded up with a lot of goods. And this is something that's gonna be a concerning trend as we continue to move forward into 2022, as those upstream orders continue to flow in, some of that business to business activity continues to happen, but there's nowhere to put some of these goods. And so that's gonna be an area where it's gonna be very, very important to watch because in our next chart here, when we get into it, we're gonna looking at warehousing prices as well. And of course, if you haven't checked the LMI or gotten up to date with the LMI, it's red similar to the PMI so anything above 50 is indicative of expansion or anything below 50 is indicative of contraction so that 80 uh, reading percentage point reading is definitely indicative of some significant expansion while this 86.36 reading for warehousing prices also indicative of expansion as well so even if we do see some downward movement it's still above 50 so 
So that's still showing that it's increasing at a pretty significant clip here. So this is gonna be one of those areas that we watch very closely because those orders continue to come in, those flatbed trailers stay busy, and we're starting to see those inventory levels really kind of spike upstream, and we're also seeing those warehouses really getting really, really tight with capacity, and those prices go up as well. So really, those inventory managers are gonna to have to be even more critical on what's getting pulled in, and that just in case versus just in time battle is gonna mean so much more now. But that's gonna do it for this first shipper update. We might have another one for you a little bit later on, but right now, we're gonna to toss it over to Kaylee Nix.